Welcome back to the New Life Recap, your weekly roundup of comings and goings on the New Life server. This week, one man becomes a thief, one becomes a fool, and one becomes an accessory to murder. Got it? Then let's go! CPK starts his week with a plan, to see exactly how much trouble he can get into that the Rift can get him out of. There's plenty of looting to be done. First stop is a deep sea temple with tridents that can't hit him, but needing to break blocks leaves him vulnerable to poison traps. Not worth it. CPK ignores the temptation of the towers that took his crabby life, turning instead to the phantom-filled airship that claimed several other people's lives instead. After spleefing the entry guard, he saunters from chest to chest, enjoying the sight of monsters who have nothing to target. Once it gets so thick with spawns that it's hard to walk around, CPK takes his leave, leaping casually back down to Earth for his next mission. A spider cave is next on his list, which is more annoying than dangerous due to cobwebs he can't break, and the spider's loving him so much he almost can't leave. Even his teleport leaves him in a sticky situation. I have a choice. I'm gonna have to do it. I'm gonna have to do it. Wait, I'm, I'm in the cluster! CPK faces an even larger guardian temple, but the lack of easily obtainable loot mixed with the risk of drowning is too much, and he chickens out. After two empty-handed runs, he needs a win, so he mocks Chatters, telling him to fill in the hole in his floor, and then falls into the hole again. Okay, but there has to be something in the nether, right? There is! Stacy's house! That's still quite dangerous even with the rift open, so CPK slaps an interesting choice of painting on the wall and heads back to his real home, still duplicating pigs to this day. Sparrow's gotten settled in his new home, time to see those of others. He flies into Joel's base and gets a tour of the place from Kind Lynn, and gifts him with an enchanted golden apple, as well as a skull catalyst. It's a package deal. Uh, yeah, I'm just sort of, you know, spreading the message. The good message of Skulk. Oh, what? Good message? I'm yeah. not so sure, but okay. He passes by Sausage's place again, and brings the curious bunny man to visit his new home in the ancient city. Finding a route for Sausage lets him stop by Martin's on the way, and admire the icy land and the colony, even if the ice man himself is absent. Sparrow asks the Skulk to play nice with Sausage, and all seems fine and good, except Sausage's focus on looting everything doesn't play too well. The censors start to get antsy, and so Sparrow asks his guest to leave, growing increasingly upset himself. The hare doesn't heed his warnings, however, rummaging through a holy place, and a warden appears that both Sausage and Sparrow are powerless to stop. Two shrieks later, Sparrow is alone with a dead rabbit and guilt tinged bitter. I was pretty clear this is a holy place. It's important to me. And he just decided to stay, calling it loot. It's more than loot. It's important to me. To keep anyone else from repeating Sausage's mistakes, Sparrow decides to close off the ancient city from outsiders for the safety of everyone. He builds a giant gate blocking off the entrance of the city, openable only from the inside, so any guests would have to wait for him to slip through the skulky ground and let them in on his terms. Exhausted, Sparrow falls asleep, only to wake from a strange dream in a cold sweat to find that the ancient city, still bearing his gate, has changed. Some things never change, though. Jimmy is and has always been a man who gives the people what they want. And what they want is for him to build the outside of Ken's famous Mojo Dojo Casa House. Or as he puts it... Of the Ken's Casa Mojo... The, the Casa... The, the, the... Build. And we do mean just the outside. Not only is the building entirely open plan, but he's planning to hire one of his friends to do the interiors for him later, since that kind of design is out of his wheelhouse. He stops by the museum to put up a few new pieces, including one with an interesting tattoo idea. Don't tempt fate, Jimmy. As a man of the people, Fun Guy wants to make sure the things he's doing are fun for other people, so he takes suggestions. Catherine and Scott both want him to keep a named mob around the Dreamland, and Catherine is smart enough to provide the name ahead of time. Sausage has him sneaking into the deep dark for a selfie with an unaware warden, and Joel calls back to the code of a different bad boy life, sending him up to world height for a death-defying bucket clutch. And go! Riding high on that success, Jimmy immediately tackles Owen's suggestion of digging straight down on a single block, and barely escapes a lava -y death right at the bottom of the world. Good thing he still had that water bucket on him. Fwip has a slightly different request, but he still knows the magic word to make Jimmy come a-running. Can you help me with a fun experiment? Did he say fun? On my way! Fwip's fun experiment is to put someone with levels into his cobble processor, because he's heard it can squeeze the levels out into a block for later. He doesn't have any levels, but Fun Guy does, and he is happy to help. 
Wait, aren't crushing wheels dangerous to- Let's check it. Let's check- Yeah. No. I think I'm too big. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh it's working! It's working! Oh my gosh! And we're gone. That wraps up the week here on New Life Recap. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a like if you liked it, and subscribe if you want more. Check out the contributors in the description below, and we'll see you all next week.